So fiscal policy. So fiscal policy is the other type of demand management policy, which means that it impacts aggregate demand or you can say aggregate expenditure. So basically, uh, say your Y um, is less than Y star or your Y is greater than Y star, uh, fiscal policy is used to recover or to remove any severe inflationary or deflationary gap, basically to correct fundamental disequilibrium, uh, fundamental output gap. Then, another objective of fiscal policy is to also maintain the economy once disequilibrium has been corrected, has been removed. So, so we t once talked about government budget, which is net taxes minus government expenditure. So government budget is basically how much the government earns through tax revenues and how much the government gives away uh, in the form of government expenditure, say in the form of grants, subsidies, training programs, um, all other sorts of stuff, student grants, unemployment benefits. So when your tax, is re tax revenue is greater than your government expenditure, it's called a budget surplus. So this is a budget surplus. This means that uh, excess of central government's tax receipts over its spending. If it's the other way around, if net taxes are less than government expenditure, it's called a budget deficit, which means that excess of central government spending over its tax receipts. Let's write this down, budget deficit. Then, uh, let's talk about another terminology, national debt. So, national debt basically is accumulated budget deficits uh, over many years that occur over many years so if the budget deficit um, say is for, uh, has been occurring for say five years six years uh, which it'll turn into a national debt then from O levels and from AS we talk about public sector so we say that there's a private sector uh, owned by owned by private firms and entrepreneurs and there's public sector so public sector is made up of central government the local government and public corporations and public sector basically leads to PSBR public sector borrowing requirement or you it's also called PS N C R public sector net cash requirement. So uh, if if uh, <clears throat> so, this is basically an annual deficit of public sector, and the total amount that the public sector must borrow to recover the budget deficit. Public sector borrowing uh, is of two types. Number one is that public sector issues and sells bonds issues bonds to central bank so that's number one to central bank so this means that the money supply increases and central bank prints more money to pay for the bonds so this is only uh, when there is a dire need of the, to increase the money supply only then does public sector issues and sells bonds to the central public uh, sorry to the central bank because if it sells bonds to the central bank to pay for those bonds the central bank prints more money the other way let's slightly shift the arrow the other way this is taken care of is uh, it sells bonds to public, to general public. So this means that uh, public sector issues and sells bonds to the general public, which means that uh, there is no change in the money supply because existing cash only changes hands from the private sector to the public sector. So these are two ways uh, public sector borrowing requirement is carried out. Then let's talk about the two types of fiscal policies. Uh, let's just fiscal policy. So there are two types. Uh, number one is called non-discretionary.
non-discretionary fiscal policy also known as automatic stabilizers built-in stabilizers that's one the other one is discretionary we'll talk about the, the two policies in detail over the next two videos uh, the tools for fiscal policy if we talk about the tools for fiscal policy these are the average tax rate and transfer payments and government expenditure so in the next video we'll talk about what the uh, auto what automatic stabilizers are what non-discretionary fiscal policy is along with its limitations